For those of you who are just now tuning in, tuning in, we are joined by former three division world champion, current BKB lightweight cha- champion Layla McCarter, show stealer of BKB broadcast Layla McCarter. A pleasure to have you with us again. Thank you, thank you. It's always a pleasure to be with you guys. So talk, so talk to us. You know. I got a chance to see you when we were in Vegas for the the Mayweather fight weekend. But what's it been like since you had your fight on uh, BKB? Clearly, the mat, the fight of the card. What has been the reception like uh, in the aftermath after that fight? Thank you. Uh, the reception's been really good. You know, uh, we had a great fight there. Uh, the only knockout on the pay per view portion. Um, and it, and the reception was really good, and it gave us a lot of exposure. I mean, women fighting on pay per view that was pretty cool. Um, you know, and it doesn't happen that often. So, you know, I try to take full advantage advantage of the moment, and uh, I think we put a good show. Um, Excellent. Uh, BKB Go got ahead, another Ryan. show coming up pretty soon. Uh, I just peeped it on Boxing Scene today. Let's see. Uh, June twenty seventh. Yeah, yeah, June twenty seventh. Um, mm-hmm. Have they have they called you for that card? Well. Earlier on, we were um, negotiating to defend the title um, for June 27th, but I think they're doing a change-up now um, for this show. They're going to have, like, a smaller type of show on free TV. Oh, so it's going to be no, no Rosado. Uh, I'm not on the show, um, but they want to bring me in as part of the team, perhaps to do some commentary, um, oh, okay. that kind of thing. Yeah, so it'll be a good opportunity for me to branch out and do something else also um in the meantime. You know, and they and they made it clear that they don't want to lose me, but they you know, will be coming back probably September or October for the next one to defend the title. Okay, so, cool. Yeah. June twenty seventh we should be stepping into a another opportunity. Nice. Yeah, talking boxing. <laughs> Will you be um as you as you await for another opportunity at BKB, are you currently entertaining offers outside of the BKB ring? You know, we just saw you oh, know, young course, lady yeah. Lisa Strata on uh, the Golovkin car, Heather Hardy was on T V C car back east. You know, are you starting to entertain right. for offers now outside of the BKB realm? Absolutely, yeah. We're working on a couple things uh, um on the outside, you know, in the boxing ring. Um a few opportunities out there, but nothing that we've uh, locked into as of yet. Um, there's a local promotion here um, that we may work with in August. And, uh, you know, I'd like to get a title fight going with one of these Swedish girls over there um, for the WBC belt. Um, so it just depends on the opportunity, what makes sense, and uh, we'll go from there. Yeah, WBC champion Delphine Pursun. She's actually Belgian. Um, yeah, that mm-hmm. that's the fight to no, make no, a lightweight. No, no, no. There's another one. There's another one. Uh, there's a girl in Sweden now that just um, knocked out Victoria Cisneros in her most recent fight. I believe she's the welterweight champion. Uh, WBC. Oh, yeah, you're talking about a different weight class. Well, I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm not particular to any weight class. You know, yeah, lightweight enough. I'm good. I'm comfortable. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, so you know, welterweight, junior middle. No, she's the junior middleweight champion, I believe. Yeah, actually, yeah. 154 WBC. But I'd be right, happy yeah. to take her on and uh, take her belt. You know? um, <laughs> yeah, but you, I'd you like to do it in Vegas. Yeah. yeah. I had the WBA 154 pound belt um, that I won in South Africa. Um, and I don't ca- really care much about the weight. You know, it's all about the skill and, and what we do in the ring. It's, you know, two people in the ring and who gets the best of it. And a lot of that comes down to skill and experience. And, you know, and I have both, I believe, enough to, you know, take on anybody of this time. So um, I'd like to make that fight in Las Vegas happen. So if we had the right promoter with the TV backing, then we can make that possible and bring her here. If not, you know, I'm going to have to take it, my show on the road again and uh, fight fight them where they are. Um, so it just depends, what, like I said, what makes sense. And and so we're, you know, what we're training, we're in the gym every day, and I'm ready. Yeah, the that, uh, girl's name is, uh, well, woman. Uh, she's 39. So Michaela Lauren, um, she, right. she is the WBC Junior Middleweight Champion. Is she 39? Oh, okay. 
Well, uh, I don't have any 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 um, anything against beating up on the elderly, so <laughs> we can do that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm 36 myself. Jeez, I'm I'm creeping up on that 4-0, but um, in the next few years, I hope to cram some action in there. <laughs> Yes. I'm a I'm a twin. I'm gonna say Layla McCarter is on the show calling me elderly. I'm well, you know, just kidding. There, I'm totally kidding. Thing, <laughs> I'm just teasing. You you're five four, right? Um, I'm almost five five. So okay, uh, it's between five, those two. But I sound I, silly to say I'm five four and three quarters, right? So yeah, um, I, that's about where it is. <laughs> well, she's listed at five ten. She might even be taller. That's wow. okay. Yeah, that's the okay. bigger they are, the harder they fall. <laughs> when I won my first world title was from Sandra Yard, and she was pretty tall herself, um, and that was featherweight, 126 pounds, but she was super tall, um, probably about there, maybe 5'10", 5'11", something like that. Um, but like I said, it comes down to skill, and, you know, I know how to get in there. Yes, you um, do. It's, uh, you, I couldn't believe that, she, you know, you had the, you know, the big knockout on, on big knockout boxing that... That was uh, kind of a surprise. I mean, you know, the only I, I was, fight. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, we we put all the preparation in, and I came to make a statement. I came in just to open the door and to say, here we are, and um, you know, let, now let's talk. So um, then we went to negotiations for the second fight, and instead we're gonna, you know, like I said, we're gonna do some commentary for them, and we'll come back for the next big fight um, late in the year. Did you get a chance to? Um say anything to uh project's trainer uh during or after the fight not much you know i re- i didn't get the opportunity to talk to them after the fight i kind of wanted to um and i felt kind of rude for you know just being too busy or whatever but you know there were interviews and you know i really like diana project she's a nice girl and lucia too i have a lot of respect you know other than the fact she never wanted to fight me but um you know i got nothing against them and, and, and they're really nice people um but yeah, I didn't have much of a chance to uh, talk to them after. Uh, I think I sent I, I sent Diana a text, I believe, after the. Okay. So, yeah, we just quick back and forth, a good fight, that kind of thing. Um, you know, speaking of you know, because a lot of the, uh, uh, the, at least the, the you know the televised talent in in uh, women's boxing has is, is, is been overseas in, in recent years for the most part. Um. One of them, um, Cecilia Bregas, has you know, mm-hmm. split with her promoter, um, and is now now here in the United States. Um, I, I right. Forget who's, I forget who's backing her now. Um, Klitschko, and actually we're Klitschko working on K2, that yeah. also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was keeping that one on the on the DL, but we are actually entertaining that one as well and um, trying to make that happen Ooh. with her promoter. And that would be really excellent yeah. to do that in the U.S. on big TV, possibly on a Klitschko card. You never know. Very nice. Yeah, very, uh, very you know, nice. if Klitschko ever fights uh, maybe Deontay Wilder, I mean, or, uh, you know, that could be a great show to be um, featured on. So yeah, you never yeah. know what could happen, and she's with, with them now, and I like the Klitschkos. I like their organization, Tom Loeffler, who's been with them for years. Um, they're really classy people, and I think it'll be easier to deal with them than it was to deal with Sauerland. So, um, yeah, you know, yeah, I mean, we go way back, so I think it's going to be um, easy to do now. Yeah, K two definitely happen. seems more progressive than these other promotional companies. They, you know, they recently just brought, you know, um, Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez on on their network. Oh, yeah. um, he HBO debut made two hundred thousand dollars. So, <laughs> you know, which well, you know it, isn't a lot for most guys that are world champions and accomplished like him. But you know, he's a flyweight, uh-uh. so flyweights don't really Yeah, that's make true. <laughs> you know, the, the, these poor little guys get treated like women, man. I don't know, but um. <laughs> you know, he's a very skilled fighter. I was so impressed with him. I was just, you know, blown away by that guy. He's, he, you know, and uh, during the broadcast of the BKB, uh, Robert Garcia compared me to, or compared him to me in, in some way. Ooh. So that was a compliment. Yeah, that's, that's a very good compliment. Yeah. Hmm, I'm all bragging today. <laughs> <laughs> what else? <clears throat> yeah. No, but uh, Klitschko's are class act. They're they're really nice people, and um, we go back to where um, for many years when when Lucia Riker, was, like I said, was training in the same camp. Emmanuel Stewart was training the Klitschko's, 
and we were in La Brea training in the same gym there um, while our heavyweight was sparring with the Klitschko's. So, you know, we know the whole team, Tom Loeffler. We were there for Klitschko's birthday, had a nice dinner there, you know. And that was when I was offered the fight with Lucia Riker at Staples Center on a big undercard as well. And I said, yes, let's do it. But um, unfortunately, their team thought it was a bad idea. She had a smart team, so um, uh, that was that. Now, anyway. it, it seemed to me like during Lucia's career, you know, she was undefeated, and you know, she was probably the most feared fighter in her division and everything. But she did miss out on a lot of big fights. Um, besides yourself, who do you, who else do you think would have beat her? Would have beat her? Hmm, that's a tough question. It's hard to think outside myself sometimes. Yeah, you know? um, I. I don't know. You know, somebody who can box good and isn't afraid to mix it up uh, at that time? Hmm. I don't know. My mind is blank. But th- there had to be a couple that would have given her good fights, you know. There were there were some tough fighters, but, um, yeah, I can't, I can't name one offhand. What do you think? Um, I, I couldn't tell you. Not, not unless she moved up in weight, but, um, yeah, I knew I knew Christy Martin didn't have a chance against her. Um, I'm, I'm mad that that fight didn't happen. Really? But, um, you think so? No, I don't. Yeah, I don't, I don't think Christy would have a chance. Yeah, I don't know. I I forget what state Christy was in at that time. I don't think she was doing too well, too sharp. Yeah. But yeah, hard to say. Mm. So um, uh, tell me about you know. Uh, tr- your training, because sometimes you, you might go a long period of time without fighting. So do you scale back, you know, how much you work out? Oh, of course we scale back, yeah, because, when, you know, when we're in full-time training for a fight, it's nonstop. We eat on time. We sleep on time. Everything is just scheduled, regimented, and miserable. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, I convince myself I love it. You know, we do our road work. We, you know, um, it's two-a-day workouts, and I'm working out at least, you know, maybe three hours a session, so, you know, it's, it's it's a lot of hard work. And in the in the interim, when I don't have a fight scheduled, I scale it back. I train once a day just to maintain, um, so I can quickly step it up if I need to. Wow. So, like wow. right now, we're on a once a day schedule. But you know, since the BKB fight, I took a couple weeks and just um, I got a little bit lazy. But um, hey. you know, once in a while, <laughs> it's hard to do this year in and year out. You know, it nonstop. Is. It, it definitely is. You know, because it's just a lot of uh, lot of wear and tear on the body. I've been um, eating a lot of pasta lately, and uh, you know, uh, last week was funny because I was I was determined to go to the gym, but it just didn't happen. And you know, <laughs> I'd eat, I I said I'm going to go to the gym tomorrow, so I better eat some spaghetti and get carbo load, and you know, go there with a lot of energy. So I'd do that, but then I'd sleep in. Oh, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's my training part. time. Well, I guess I'll do it tomorrow. Okay, better eat some pasta, get some energy. <laughs> and so, this went on for about a, you know, well, about a week, better part of a week. And uh, and right now I'm sitting about 140. Um, no, no, probably 137. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been it's been lazy time for me. But now we're getting oh, back in that. the gym. We had an excellent workout today. So back on track. Right, you're still not far off from your fighting weight. Um, and I feel great today, you know, all that carbo loading. <laughs> I guess it added up because, um, yeah, I could have I could have gone all day today. It was just a, a great workout. Yeah. Um, uh, speaking about the weight, um, Cecilia had mentioned that she is willing to come down to 140 for you know a big opportunity. So I, I would mm. assume the weight would be you know a negotiating tool for that fight. So. She's on record. I don't even care. She can, she can, she can, she can fight where she's comfortable, and I'll kick her butt wherever she chooses. I don't even <laughs> care. You know, uh, she's Diana she's made me come down to 133. That kind of ticked me off, and maybe that's why I took it out on her. But um, you know, as long as I don't have to suffer, I don't care what they weigh. I, I don't. Because <laughs> I don't think those pounds are going to help her. I don't think anything's going to help her. When she's in the ring, it's me and her. She's going to say, "There's nothing going to help me now." Uh, you know. Um, and then she's going to realize who she's in the ring with, and she's going to, you know, realize her belts are coming home with me. And it's going to be a sad day for Cecilia Brackett. I mean, uh, <laughs> you know, I feel for her already. So, you know, the the, the the biggest opportunity for her she missed out on would, would have been a fight with Holly Holm. Um, 
Mm-hmm. You know, Holly decided to retire and, and, and venture into MMA. Uh, how do you think that fight would have played out? Um, it's hard to say. I don't, it depends if it was in Albuquerque or if it was in uh, Denmark. Right. <laughs> if it was right. in Albuquerque, hometown, you know, if it's in Denmark, the other way, hometown. Uh, you know, but I don't think Holly Holm would have been able to withstand, uh, you know, because Cecilia can punch if she gets in there, and and uh, you saw what happened when when Holly Holm fought the French girl uh, Mathis. Yeah, well, uh, I think her. Mathis but, is you know arguably yeah. the greatest, well, or at least second greatest female puncher like ever. So uh, she's very strong, very strong, <laughs> and uh, well, I don't know, it just would have been a tough fight. Yeah. Holly Holm could have bounced around and run around for a while. You never know. And if she's in Albuquerque, survive and win. Um, right. So, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't Holly, really think too much. Holly uh, was is somebody you tried to fight at some point? Holly Holm and I were scheduled to fight once. And that was 10 days after my fight with Jelena Brnjinovic when I broke my arm. And I didn't uh, mind scheduling fights that close together because nothing ever, ever, ever happens to me. I'm like, never cut never have a suspension and and in that particular time I broke my radial bone on my forearm I threw a wide punch and hit her in the head with my bone on the forearm and uh, cracked it Yeah, I, mean, I, I split it right in two actually um, so so I, I of course I had to pull out of the fight Right. and uh, at the time I was trying to cover it up nobody knew that I, my arm was broken after the fight I was like don't say anything you know I was saying oh my, my wrist hurts or something you know I didn't I didn't say what it was um, but then Luis was like what are you going to do my manager trainer Luis I mean you you can't just tape it up and fight are you crazy <laughs> <laughs> you know of course the doctor is looking at me already and you know they know my arm is broken so but I really didn't want to pull out of the fight I, wa- I wanted to go through with it but then I'm thinking you know I would have taken her on one handed but you know what am I going to do with the <laughs> other one it's going to be hanging there so yeah it was a disappointing thing and then Frescus was mad at me the promoter and uh, I got him a replacement for for me. Um, so, you know, he should have been happy. I, I worked it out. I got somebody to replace me in that fight. Um, but he wanted to make me pay for it since then. So, and I wasn't going to go on the, on those terms, you know. Um, and I came for too much, too cheap of a fight in the first place. The first negotiation was bad, but I was willing to go. But then I thought about it, and I'm like, I made a bad deal. So, you know, in a way it was good for me that the fight didn't happen in that way. Um so we never made a deal since then. He hated me, and and that was it. Oh, that's boxing for you. <laughs> huh? I said that's boxing for you. you know, yeah, just... you know, funny things happen. And I saw Frescus the other day. I see him every once in a while in the poker room. It's funny. We, you know, I was sitting at a poker table once, and and we were at the same table playing. And then I realized I was like, that's Lenny Frescus right there. Kind of funny. Um. <laughs> and I see him every once in a while in Vegas. He plays poker as well. So, and yeah, he asked me how I'm doing, and it's just very polite and you know, not too friendly. But you know, well, you know, times have passed, and um, you know, everything goes with the time. Yep. Anyway. Well, um, let's see. You know, it seems. In in place of you know managers and promoters making fights happen, and um, it, it really comes down to whether or not sanctioning bodies you know enforce you know like mandatory title defenses. Are are you in a position with with any of the the major bodies where you are owed a title shot? Uh probably, probably. <laughs> um, you gotta look you into know. that. Probably, but you know it comes down to the team and the and the promotion because really the promoters hold a lot of power when you know you got a local girl in Sweden that that they're making money with, uh, for example, and uh, or Denmark, <laughs> and you you know they want to keep their belt busy and as long as their fighter they have a champion there that they're keeping busy then it's good for the sanctioning body, but you know if if some girl like Layla McCarter comes in there and upsets them you know such as in South Africa. I mean, you know, there goes the business because now I've got the belt, and do I have a big promoter? No. Uh, so, it's, you know, the belt goes vacant ultimately, or or I'll defend it in somebody else's country. It's just, you know, it's not good for business for them. So they like to keep their champions winning, and that's why you see a lot of crooked decisions as well. 
Um, anyway, that's how I feel about that one. <laughs> well, you know, know. Uh, hopefully something will come your way pretty soon. Um, yeah, you know, we've got a lot of things working. Like I said, the Cecilia Brex would be the big fight. That's, that's, right. That is the one that I want to make happen in the U.S. hopefully this year or, or early next year. That would be nice. Um, but i got to be patient. You know, the Klitschko's have a lot of other things going on. So, you know, they've got uh, their other fighters and whatnot. Um, so I hope to get in there soon with her. That's that's the one I want to make happen. But in the meantime, I'd be happy to take on anybody else and, you know, collect some belts and wreck their business and <laughs> go on about my business. Uh, later the business record for Carter. <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's what we're the spoiler. You know, we go into uh, Jelena's hometown. We took, you know, her undefeated status in Japan and New Zealand and um, South Africa. So, you know, I've made a career of doing that. But, you know, you'd think it would translate into something in my own hometown. You know, have a good promotion yeah. going, good TV. And um, I'm still hopeful that that will happen. You know, um, I've still got a couple good years, and I think I'm the best I've ever been right now. In this time, you know, you know, um, your hometown is Vegas, right? Yes, I've been here 15 um, years. So, speaking of Vegas, you know, it seems to me that the the promotional company out there is Mayweather Promotions. Have they done anything to suggest that they will get into women's boxing? Not at all, and in fact, to the contrary. So, um, yeah, I've seen no positive uh, moves that direction, and I've even talked to you know Leonard about it and and Floyd and. Floyd is, you know, Floyd is Floyd. He's he's a fighter himself. He's doing his own thing, and he'll say, yeah, 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 Leonard, let's do something. And then, you know, when I talked to Leonard, he said, there's no market for women's boxing. I said, well, how do you know? How do I know? Yeah, how do you know? Did you ever put a woman's fight on? I mean, you know, they just are against it, and that's it, and that's the way it is. You know, a lot of people just won't give it a shot. So, um. You know, I think they've had female promotions on when they promoted Jester Ricosi on the small shows at the Hard Rock and that kind of thing. So, I mean, you know, there's hope for them yet. <laughs> but as for putting them on a big show, on a like a Mayweather card or something, um, I'll be really surprised if that ever happens. But uh, you well, never know. Yeah, you know, when Floyd retires, he might decide to get more serious about this promotion thing. I think so. I, I I think so. But as far as women in the, you know, I really hope that he comes around with that and you know recognizes the talent that's there. But um, we'll see. Yep, we will see. And um, you know, uh, best of luck to you with uh, whatever comes next. You know, we'll, we'll be looking out for that. Uh, um, Thank you. That move Thank with, you. I'll keep uh, you guys posted. Yeah, breakers. yeah. I'll let you know what goes on next, and I really appreciate you guys. Uh, having me on, and uh, it's always always a great time talking to you guys. Yeah, you too. Uh, you're a great guest. All right. Anytime. Thanks. Right. Thanks, Layla. Okay. All right. Have talk to night. you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.